Oh, and here we go. Welcome to my lovely home. As you can see, I just woke up and we are in my base. Yeah, so this is a fairly big base that you built. Um, first, we have a bunch of different things that you added to the base. Uh, right now, we have a lean-to that you just interacted with and you got to set your spawn point there, but that's also a place where you can rest and uh, pass the, the night if you want to. But we have a lot of vanity items that you built. We have some chairs and a little sconce right here for light. Yes, I love the way that a lot of this came together. Um, I love the fact that you use things that you find, such as the bug parts in the chair. I love turning off the lights. I don't know what it is, but <laughs> turning lamps and torches on and off are great. But so yeah, we just so woke up right things. now and it's morning. So the sun hasn't really risen yet. So it's a little bit uh, on the dark side, but uh, uh, first of all, you need to, as you can t tell from your scabby in the lower uh, left-hand corner, uh, your thirst and your hunger meters are a little bit low when you first wake up. So you have to, you know, when you start your day, you have to drink and you have to eat. And uh, you just uh, drank a dew drop from the dew catcher, which is a building that you can place in your base. Yeah, and That's a little spider web thing that you saw there. And that was really interesting, that entire idea, because I never would have thought of just collecting dew that way. But it almost looks like a dream catcher, but a dew catcher. So I like that. <laughs> And yeah, and, uh, this is one of my favorite moments is uh, when the sun starts rising. The yeah, you're up at high right the... now. And it's a really, really oh. cool vista shot of the yard. And you can see how expansive everything is. So all those pieces of grass, uh, you know, there's, there's things to explore everywhere. And it's a very cool handcrafted environment. No, and you can see you cool. built your base near a baseball. Yes. It was one of the nice landmarks. Um, so that way I had a reference point to come back to. And then here we are uh, finishing up my base. I didn't have time to finish quite before I recorded. So we get to put up some walls. <laughs> yeah, so this is an example of how you build your base. And we have a tile grid that you can build on just for ease of use. And all that base that you built is made out of grass planks. And those are just one of the resources that is required. And you can get grass planks by cutting down oh, grass yeah. blades. One of the things that I do want to point out is that I had to keep a stockpile of extra materials because I noticed at night some of the creatures would come out and attack my base, even if I was just at home, like, hey, we're chilling. Why, why does that happen? <laughs> So another thing that uh, we're doing here is we're building up a ceiling um, and the ceiling is made out of uh, clover leaves. So this is another resource and the structural elements are also made out of weeds. So you have to cut down weeds to, to build some of the structural elements of your base. Now, I really like the pattern, the fact that you guys laid the clovers over each other to make it actually look like a roof tile. Yeah, it's it's a you know it's just like little little things like that. Um, you know, you can customize your base uh, and really express yourself through a lot of different vanity things, um, and really build out a really really cool base. And there's you can see there's some defenses that you can build as well, such as a spike trap. Yeah, that comes in handy uh, for like I said at night when the creatures attack. I can wake up and then just go harvest body parts <laughs> of anybody who got stuck down there. So uh, you ventured out and you got a little snack here. This is a mushroom that you, you just picked up and ate. Um, when you start you know, your day, you do, you do get hungry. So uh, the mushrooms aren't really a great source of food, but it is a, a tasty little snack that you can get. And the mushrooms will grow back over time. Ha! Interesting. Ha! And this is what I like is when you're ha! chopping down items you actually get exhausted during that part. So you have to take a little bit, a little bit of time to go ahead and build that back up before you can chop. And then the fact that it breaks down um, into easier parts to carry is really neat. Yeah, and those weed logs are too big to fit in your inventory. So you have to haul them around. Uh, <laughs> and when you are really small, physics acts a little bit differently down here. And you, know, you can haul big, huge objects and some things are just too big to fit, and the weed logs are an example of that. Yeah, I really like um, the way that the view changes in both first and third. 
because in oh, third yeah. you just look super strong and in oh, first yeah. it's just like yeah oh, look yeah. at all this stuff <laughs> i'm carrying <laughs> yeah that's a good point too uh so we do have first and third person cameras uh so you can play however you want if you like to explore in, in third person you can do that if you want to you know fight insects in first person you can do that as well so it's you know it's up to you how you want to play Cool. And, and now uh, you're getting ready sorry, to go you're out. playing as hoops right now. Um, just just adding that in. That's one of the four selectable teenagers that you can play as. Yes. And at this time, I want to remind you: if you guys aren't asking questions, feel free to start posting questions in Discord, in Twitter, or in Twitch and Mixer. So that way, when we get to the Q and A part, we can answer some of those questions for you, which will come later. But I do want to ask about that juice drop. Um, yeah, so I've, yeah, go there's ahead. a lot of man-made objects in the world, So, uh, and each one has its own unique thing. Like Some are just there to build a base around and, and act as a cool landmark. With the juice box, for example, uh, you can find tasty juice out of the straw, and it will drop down, and you can slurp it up, and it's a good source. Uh, you know, you don't get a lot, but it's a good source to refill your, your thirst and your food. But there's a lot of cool things uh, in, the, in the yard that you can find. Um, that have different properties like that. No, it works out. And speaking of things that you can find in the yard, like that juice box, where do some of those concepts come up with? Because I've noticed a lot of it is made specifically for this game. Yeah, like everything the, is the handcrafted top. and unique, and we're making everything, you know, for grounded. And there's a lot of story elements for those man-made objects. So it's it's one of those mystery things. If you know, as you play the game, you'll kind of have an understanding of why these things are in the yard and who lives here and why are all these things placed here. So there's a little weevil. Uh, weevils are little insects that you can find. Uh, they actually will sniff out mushrooms. So if you don't kill them like you did here, uh, you can actually follow them and they'll lead you to different mushroom patches. But you can also, you know, hunt them and kill them and build stuff out of their parts. And I've noticed with the mushrooms, while they're a great resource to have, they don't really do a whole lot in terms of uh, filling your hunger gauge. Yeah, they're so just like a little tasty snack. So, you know, <laughs> you actually, eventually you will want to hunt insects. They, they definitely give you more nutrition. Uh, so you, right now you're, you're finding uh, or hunting an aphid and you're, uh, you know, aphids are, are meaty and they're good good source of food. So you'll have to roast them up and you have to cook them. So there's an extra step involved, uh, but that that's the preferred way of, of you know, eating and grounded. What's uh, nice too is I it it's very early on to where you're able to kill like the weevils or the aphids to where they don't attack you. So you feel bigger, but I realized later when you get to ants and other larger creatures, you need some armor. So I'm starting with this uh, clover armor, but I haven't really progressed past that. What other types of armors can we expect to see? Yeah, so clover armor is, is what we think of as like tier zero armor. It's your first starting armor that you'll find. We do have more advanced armors. We have tiers of armor sets and each armor has different properties depending on your play style. So for example, if you want to play a more tanky character and go in head on and fight insects with, with melee weapons, uh, there are different options for you. For example, there's the acorn armor, which offers more protection. So there, there's three slots. So as you can see, you have a, a head uh, piece and a armor piece, chest piece equipped. There's also the leg slot, and those will show up in the lower left-hand corner. Um, so you can see how much of protection you have left. Uh, and that's cool that you uh, talked about the different types of play styles. So that way when I hop in the game and play with my friends, we can each play a different type of way, but still all play together at the same time. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we are talking about the single player part of the game here, but there is a, you know, if you want to jump in and play co-op with your friends, you can play up to four players um, and you can choose each one of the four player characters to adventure with. And a lot of things change depending on single and multiplayer, but you know the entire game is is definitely playable from a single player, and you can go through the story at your own pace, or you can have fun and, and build a big base with your friends. 
So you actually did a pretty good uh, shot here. Uh, <laughs> so you, you, you were able to kill the aphid with your bow and arrow. I think that's like my proudest moment. <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting and the fact that I did it on one of the first few tries, I was, I was very proud, so thank you. <laughs> Yeah, one thing that uh, for oh, people that are really looking at the stream, one thing you'll, you'll notice is on a lot of the resources, you'll see, uh, you know, an axe and a hammer. Those are the uh, tools that you'll need to harvest those items. So we just want to make it very easy and apparent to, to tell you like, hey, you'll need this to be able to, to harvest this thing. So you'll see that occasionally pop up. Um, and it's one thing that we've been working a lot on to communicate that to the player. I think it's just a cool addition to the survival game that that you know we're looking at all different ways of improving the survival game with grounded no and you guys also did a really good job in streamlining the crafting too because i don't know if um you remember when i was picking up all the the items all the plant fiber not only did it tell me how much i picked up but it told me how much i had in total which helps when you're trying to keep track and trying to craft a whole bunch of stuff all at once Oh, yeah, yeah, finally got those pants on. I am fully armored <laughs> out. <laughs> and you can see we have storage. So if you know your inventory is only a certain size, so you'll have to store stuff. And here's another cool addition that we've never shown off before is the, the smoothie station. So the smoothie station is a, a unique uh, utility building that you can place down in your base. And it's it's a experimental, experimental crafting station where you can put bug parts into it and mash it all up and you can get something out of it, uh, which is a smoothie. And you can put any three ingredients in there and see what you get out of it. Um, and most of the stuff is very beneficial, so it's a way to buff your character in combat. And you know, uh, you can just try out different things. Uh, one cool thing that we're doing is if you do find a cool smoothie that works out really well, it will actually remember that in, uh, recipe for you. Um, so you don't have to remember all those things, you know, all the different ingredients that turned into a cool smoothie. One of the things that I loved about that smoothie station when I first saw it is the fact that I get to use bug parts that I may not have a purpose for at that time. So it was really nice to be like, I don't have to throw this stuff away. I could just make a delicious smoothie. <laughs> and it might be gross, but most of the smoothies offer at least some nutrition. Yeah, I think that one that I just crafted uh, replenished some health, which will definitely come in handy when I go exploring. Oh, here we are trying to equip my spiky sprig. So Spiky Sprig is a club, it's a tier one club weapon. Yeah, we also have a spear that we have. <laughs> yeah, I think so far I've been able to craft and equip a spear, the Spiky Sprig, and a bow and arrow. So if you noticed, uh, time of day is passing in, in the world right now. And we started in the early morning and now it's about midday here. And the cool thing about Grounded is that the environment will really change depending on the time of day. So different insects will change their behavior. So some will go to sleep during the night, some will go to sleep during the day, some will patrol at night um, and they'll wake up and hunt. So depending on the time of day, uh, you'll encounter different things. So you have to plan accordingly. So if you're going out and adventuring, depending on the time of day, you might need to equip different things or prepare differently. So it makes a lot of sense, and I like the fact that it, you guys, the game makes it really easy for you to figure out what time of day it is, which is why it's so bright right now, and the shadows <laughs> kind of come like directly down. Yeah, the visuals are just amazing. I love just watching the sun go, you know, overhead and, and watching the lighting. Oh yeah. Oh, and so here we're we venturing go. over we found towards our first the oak spider tree. on this oak tree. Yeah, so we're over near the oak tree and there's an ant hill here. Um, there's some ants, but there's also, here's an orb weaver spider. And it's a pretty dangerous oh, creature no. to fight early on. Uh, and the orb weaver will shoot a web at you to, to stun you in place and hold you in place while he'll munch on you. And as you can see, <laughs> you, you probably want to be better equipped before uh, fighting orb weavers or spiders in general. We have a couple different spider varieties. Um, and 
Now it's time to, to talk about the death mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, as, as you can see, uh, there's a small penalty to death. It's not a huge penalty. And once you die, you'll have to go and retrieve your equipment that you were carrying on your backpack. You yeah, want to get I like the player the like up and running really quickly. You guys, there's an icon on the screen, so I am not completely lost. So if I went off exploring, didn't know where I was, it's pretty easy to go find my backpack. Whether or not it's going to be easy to get to the backpack is a different story. <laughs> <laughs> but this one looks hey, like it's sneak okay. in there. Perfect. Take all my stuff, get ready to equip it. And then run away from that spider. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing too is I love the way that you guys got uh, grass and clovers to move when a big creature was walking nearby. So it kind of gives me a tell that oh, there's something over there I may not want to go greet. <laughs> That's one feature that we're really proud of that we were able to pull that off. So all the grass that you see here is interactable. Every little bit is interactable, and it's one cool thing that we were able to do to have large insects really, you know, show off how big they are by displacing the grass. And it's a really cool thing where you can see on the horizon if there's a huge creature lurking about. Yeah, it's definitely helpful and kind of scary when it's a uh, grass close to you. <laughs> Here we go, we are getting ready. Running away from the oak tree because I think I was done with the orb weavers. <laughs> and oh, well, it looks like we got a ladybug on a grass. Yeah, the ladybug think... looks like it's stuck up there. Yeah, but you know <laughs> what? That's part of the reason why we're doing this early access July 28th, right? So that way we can get the players in the game playing so that way they can help us find all this stuff and make the game a game that we all want to play. Yeah, so, you know, th there's going to be a little some issues here and there um we hope to have it as polished as we possibly can have it oh, yeah. but we want to involve the community as early as possible in the development of the game so it, you know everyone can help shape the direction and the future of grounded right here we fought a little mite uh mites are just hostile little pests that will you know bite your face off if you're not paying attention if they group up they're a little more dangerous Oh, you can hear them come too. Yep. <laughs> and I love this too. I love the fact that if I have forgotten to equip something or accidentally thrown it, I can at least try to punch before running away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So punching is always the last ditch option. Um, not recommended, but if you run out of your weapons, you can always go in and punch. There we go. So going back to some of the story, it seems that I seem to be standing under some sort of machine. Is that something we'll find out later on? <laughs> yeah, so that, that is a story element. Um, it, it, there is a lot of, uh, you know, as you can see from the trailer, there is, you know, a lot going on in this yard with a lot of different layers. And that's one thing that as you play through the storyline, uh, you'll find more and more information about what's going on about the mystery of the yard. Who put you here? Who owns this yard? And, you know, we introduced the robot friend in the game. His name is Burgle, and we both mm -hmm. have Burgle shirts on, so. Yeah. <laughs> so Burgle is uh, definitely a, a favorite of the team, um, and we're happy to finally get to talk about Burgle. And he <laughs> is uh, your robot buddy that's helping you throughout the adventure. So. Not only do we have this awesome world to explore, but we do have a story that takes you through the different environments and there's reasons why you're here. And that's really important to us, you know, as, as a studio um, to have a rich story with awesome characters. You can see the grass moving. That is a much bigger spider this time. Holy jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can see that we do have banter with the characters. So if you're playing alone, you still get the banter from, from the character that you picked and they'll comment on the, the things going on in the yard. Um, and it adds a lot of personality to the, to the character and to the adventure. And that was a hunter uh, uh, wolf spider. And those guys, you just wanna run the other way if you see those. 
Yeah, I also liked back there that I was able to go inside the soda can and go oh, explore yeah. inside that. That was neat. Yeah, all the man-made objects are really fun landmarks to build bases around. Hey, I think I And if if you want to build a base game. inside the the so can as well and game. make it your house, you can do that. Uh, offers good protection. Um, now we're in a different, slightly different area in the yard, which is what we call the flooded area. And there's a sprinkler nearby that has a crack in it and has been leaking for several days and has flooded a big portion of the yard. And mm -hmm. in this flooded area, there's different uh, flora and fauna that you'll experience and find and different way, different materials that you can craft from. And there's one little creature that has been, uh, you know, kind of uh, bugging you, which is our gnat. And the gnats are, are just little, you know, pest insects that you can hunt for food, but they also try to bop you um, and give you little, we call it the gnat kiss, and bop you <laughs> off objects if you're um, on top of something. And yeah, they're, they're, not they're more fun. dangerous in swarms. Yeah, I could see that, because you, you, you see the one and you can keep an eye on it and just kind of attack. But back there, once we had the four, there was no way. <laughs> <laughs> and we do have toys in the yard too, so that there is a reason why all these things are in the yard. Oop, and there's a big spider. Oh, oh he chased <laughs> me down. Oh, and that's it. I died. 